Dogs, dogs, dogs. We see them everywhere. In our homes, streets, work, art galleries, and history books. Have you ever wondered how dogs became such a big part of our art and history? Ah, uh, not really, mate, but I'm sure you're going to tell me, innit? Dogs have played a significant role in our lives for centuries, providing unwavering loyalty, companionship, and unconditional love. Yeah. We're going to continue doing it and that. But did people understand dogs' emotions? Yeah, I wonder. Well, we're about to find out, because today we're doing the morning of the dogs. Dogs have been depicted in art since prehistoric times. In fact, some of the earliest cave paintings found in Europe feature dogs as hunting partners and companions, suggesting that the bond between humans and dogs has existed for a very long time. During the Middle Ages, dogs continued to hold a prominent place in art, often symbolizing loyalty, fidelity, and protection. Medieval tapestries and paintings often featured dogs accompanying hunters, nobles, and religious figures. Artistic styles and interpretations of emotions evolved over time. While earlier depictions might not exhibit the same level of detailed emotional expression as later works, they often still conveyed emotions through postures, expressions, and symbolism. Dinner is ready. Mother, we're doing something important here. I'll be there in a minute. Seriously, Maze, how are you dealing with that ASMR shit? It's your mother, Leon. You can't talk like that. Anyway, the Renaissance brought a renewed appreciation for realism and detail in art, and dogs were no exception. Yeah, now we're talking. Artists of this era, such as Leonardo da Vinci, Rembrandt. It's actually Rembrandt Harmanzoon van Rijn. No, it's actually... Rembrandt van Rijn. Anyway, the last one was Eugène Delacroix. These artists captured the nuances of canine body language, expressions, and personalities with remarkable precision. Their works imbued dogs with a sense of lifelike presence, conveying their individual personas and the depth of their emotions. That one looks happy. You know, in the era of Romanticism, Artists like Sir Edwin Henry Landseer began to portray animals with an acknowledgement of their emotional depth. Landseer's deep fascination with canines, combined with his regular visits to the Scottish Highlands, inspired many of his works. He frequently featured stags and dogs in dramatic natural settings, capturing the intricate emotions of these animals. Well, that's a bit dramatic. Landseer believed animals, like humans, had emotions that could be captured and conveyed through art. His ability to anthropomorphize animals allowed viewers to connect emotionally with them, seeing reflections of human emotions in the poses and expressions of the dogs. And he proves it in his work. The Poor Dog, completed in 1829, is a showcase of profound sadness and loyalty, with a grief-stricken dog staying on its deceased shepherd's grave. The atmosphere of the painting and the dog's expression evoke empathy and loss demonstrating the emotional capacity of animals. You can actually see the feeling in this one. You know, there is this poem by Sir Walter Scott titled Helvelin, which tells the touching story of a loyal dog who protects her owner's body. The owner had tragically died during a mountain climbing accident, and his body remained undiscovered for three months. Throughout this time, the faithful dog stayed by his side keeping away ravens and foxes. And this was also Landseer's painting. The attachment brings the scene to life with the striking use of light and dark contrasts, and by positioning the man's body at the lower part of the painting, portraying the perilous height from which the man had fallen. Jesus, man, you know people only cry on this app. Anyway, Landseer's connections with the British aristocracy and Queen Victoria herself, who were his patrons, also influenced his subject matter. The Victorian era was characterized by a strong interest in domesticity and the animal kingdom, which were seen as symbols of the home and the empire. The Queen's love for her pets, especially dogs, encouraged Landseer's focus on these subjects, and he did focus indeed. The Old Shepherd's Chief Mourner, completed in 1837, was a huge success, resonating with the public's love for animals and appreciation for touching narratives. It quickly became widely popular. Landseer was criticized by some for his sentimental approach, 
but the emotional connection it evoked with viewers was undeniable. The painting depicts a grief-stricken scene where the loyal dog lies by the side of its deceased master, its body language exuding a profound sense of loss and devotion, reminding us of the deep bond animals create with their companions. I wonder if he painted any dogs like me. By painting dogs in dramatic and often humanized contexts, Landseer tapped into the cultural zeitgeist, appealing to the sentimental and romantic sensibilities of his audience. And he wasn't alone. Artists like James Archer and Charles Christian Nall also explored themes of grief, devotion, and the complex bond between humans and animals. Archer's A Dog Mourning Its Little Master depicts a sorrowful dog beside a deceased child symbolizing the Victorian era's high child mortality rates and the enduring love that transcends death, while Nal's work, set against the California Gold Rush's backdrop, shows a dog mourning over its fallen master, highlighting the unyielding bond between humans and animals. All about the money, huh? As artists delve deeper into the complexities of the human-animal bond, a thought-provoking question echoed throughout the intellectual landscape. Do animals truly experience emotions like grief, loyalty, and joy? This question wasn't just the concern of philosophers, but also intrigued keen observers of the natural world. Charles Darwin, renowned for his theory of evolution, also turned his keen observational skills towards the emotional lives of animals. In his later work, The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Animals, he explored the emotional expressions of animals, including those of his own dog, Polly. He argued that the emotional responses seen in animals are not fundamentally different from those of humans, suggesting a continuum of emotional experience across species. This topic, widely discussed and popularized by Darwin's writings, coincided with a cultural milieu already ripe with discussions about animal consciousness and emotions. This backdrop provided fertile ground for artists of the era to explore these themes more deeply in their work. You, behind the screen, you don't respect my emotions. Why don't follow my Instagram? Go fix that. Anyway, one of my favorite examples that beautifully encapsulates this era's evolving understanding of animal emotions is Requiescat by Britton Riviere. This British painter masterfully created a poignant portrayal of mourning and loss. The title, translating to May He Rest in Peace, sets a somber tone. In the painting, a solitary Irish setter sits beside its deceased owner. The dog's mournful gaze, fixed on the owner, and its body curled protectively near the bed seemed to emanate a palpable aura of sorrow and unwavering loyalty. This painting, along with the works of artists like Landseer, showcases the evolution of representing animal emotions in art. From the dramatic portrayal of grief in The Old Shepherd's Chief Mourner, to the introspective exploration of devotion in Requiescat, these artists incorporated a nuanced understanding of animal behavior and emotions into their work. This growing awareness, set against a backdrop of changing attitudes towards animals and their emotional lives, not only enriched artistic depictions, but also fostered a deeper appreciation for the intricate bonds between humans and animals. So what do you think, Leon? Have we grown to understand dogs' emotions better? First of all, please don't die on me because I will cry for you. And better yet, if you say to me one more time that you didn't know I was sad, I will bite your ass.